All right, uh, Manish Ma. That's, that's all I know. Кстати, может быть, кто-то здесь понимает по-русски? Отзовитесь. I knew it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, my name is Dennis Batloff, and I'm a solutions architect uh, working in the EMEA. And I'm here today to uh, talk about machine learning. And this is really an exciting service, a new exciting service that we've launched. And what's especially exciting about this service is the fact that you don't really need to have specialized knowledge to be able to use it. Now, uh, if some of you do have that kind of knowledge or know a little bit about machine learning, uh, like myself, uh, this is still a great tool to be using because uh, it's simple. and you know, it, it gives you an opportunity to experiment with your data really easily to try to find the signal in your data. Anyways, this demo today is uh, about social media. You see my Twitter handle over here. So uh, uh, what we're going to talk about is the fact that more and more companies nowadays uh, are using social media as a kind of a feedback channel, right? They communicate with their customers and allow their customers to communicate back with these companies or with, with, with you. Um, now, for example, uh, let me try to see uh, here. Perhaps I can post a tweet as well. Um, how can I get the fridge magnets? Asking AWS Cloud, uh, you should consider um, giving them away uh, with every uh, professional cert. All right, done. Uh, that should deserve a round of applause. You've been applauding cats here. <laughs> All right, no, no applause. Um, <laughs> there will be more interesting stuff uh, coming up. So obviously, somebody needs to monitor um, these kinds of tweets. Uh, and you know, it takes effort. You need to typically hire a team who is looking at these tweets and trying to parse and trying to understand and respond uh, to these tweets. Now, perhaps, just perhaps we could use something like machine learning to be able to process these tweets and understand what they're about, and perhaps pre-filter the tweets so that the human reviewers don't need to spend as much time looking at them. How can we do this? Well, let's look at the machine learning service just to, to give you a quick overview of what it actually does. And it allows you to solve three typical machine learning problems. Uh, problem one is regression, right? I give you a new data point, and you can return back some value. For instance, how much is this house going to sell for? Or how many of this product do I need to buy for my inventory? Clear. Uh, another kind of problem is classification. In this case, multi-class type prediction for any new data point. Tell me which class it belongs to. Even with twits, by the way, we can try to classify them as complaints, feature requests, suggestions, uh, questions. Uh, maybe just exciting tweets. Uh, and in fact, uh, in this case, we're going to use a special case of uh, multi-class uh, prediction, is binary pr prediction. Um, and in this case, we're just going to be interested in separating general tweets that we don't need to do anything about. I mean, people are excited about a product, great. But uh, we really would like to act on some interesting tweets like questions, suggestions, complaints. And uh, so the two classes are actionable and non-actionable tweets. Great. Um, so now, how do I use machine learning for this? Uh, I need to amass a large amount of data for training. This data needs to be labeled. Um, so somebody has to look at the tweet and say, OK, this belongs to an actionable tweet category, and this doesn't. And of course, this could be quite expensive uh, if you were trying to do this a new. Now, if you already had a review team doing this uh, regularly, you may already have labeled tweets. But in case you don't, this may sound like an, ex uh, like an expensive proposition. Uh, but wait. 
Amazon actually has a service and has built it many, many years ago called Mechanical Turk. And when it was launched, it was actually jokingly called artificial, artificial intelligence, because here the humans are actually doing the so-called human intelligent tasks. And uh, I guess this is too uh, big. So for Mechanical Turk, you could actually dole out these human intelligent tasks and pay human workers a certain amount of money, usually a very small amount of money, we're talking about cents, because those tasks can be done very quickly. A human can look at, at a tweet and quickly decide if this is a complaint or not, for example. Right? And so here, you could either post, thing, post uh, items to work on, or you can become a worker and make money. And for instance, to give you an idea of what are the typical uh, tasks are in Mechanical Turk, we can look at the current offerings, maybe find something interesting here, uh, answer questions about images. Okay. Hopefully this is a safe image to show. Uh, it appears to be so. Uh, that's really it. So, in fact, uh, somebody for this demo has already gone ahead and uh, labeled, used Mechanical Turk to label about 10,000 tweets. Um, with particular classifications, and we're going to use that data today. Now, by the way, um, if you want to get the tweets, here I may need to log in into the EC2 box that I've configured. Uh, oops. Detach, reattach, done. Okay, so we have in this library uh, a Python script that is using the get search Twitter API to pull the tweets uh, down, and we're going to use uh, something like this uh, now as an example. Uh, I'm not going to show the details of the tweet. You need to get uh, the Twitter um, credentials to do this. Uh, let's see. Python, uh, gather data. And we need to specify a handle, such as uh, AWS Cloud. This is the uh, kind of the account that we would like to monitor. This is the AWS account. And the script is going ahead, happily collecting uh, tweets. And while it does that, let's see how we can use the label data for the machine learning. Now, in fact, in this collection and, and this demo here, the scripts that I'm showing are all part of uh, a GitHub uh, sample. And we have complete instructions on how to replicate this kind of uh, uh, demo. And then later on, I will include the link to this. So one of the scripts here is actually creating a machine learning model by first uploading the label data into S3, creating a data source out of that data, and then using the data source, uh, building the machine learning model, and then evaluating this model, deciding uh, what the accuracy of it is, and so on. Now, it takes uh, you know, a few minutes to actually build the model, so instead I'm just going to show you the console. with the machine learning dashboard. And you can see two data sources created. One is actually the training data source. And just by uploading the label data, we're already seeing something quite interesting. Uh, there's a lot of statistics provided. So you see the, we have 70% of data actually used for training. But we can look at the visualization of the target class its distribution, we see that most of the tweets are not actionable, and only a, a portion of the tweets uh, is considered actionable among the labeled data. We then can further look at the attributes, and there are many, many attributes about each tweet that uh, are used here. So for example, whether the tweet was favorited, uh, the geography, uh, the timestamp, and so on. And so you can look at various categories uh, here, you know, some of them are just numeric values, some of them are categorical, some of them text. So, for example, if we look at the description field of the tweets, you 
you see the type of terms, the popular terms, from those people who are actually tweeting. But now let's look at the process of, or, or the actual model that got built. This is more interesting. Here's the model. Uh, we see that uh, it's been evaluated with a score of 0.85. This is the area under curve uh, kind of metric that is used. We don't have time to go into what this metric is exactly. Um, but we could look at also the evaluation of this model. And this is perhaps the most useful and most interesting part here. Because in the case of binary classification, we can adjust the parameter of the model to tip the balance of what the model is producing towards a desired outcome. Um, now, what is this graph showing? In fact, uh, there is a handy button here that explains what this chart is. Hmm. Well, we can barely make out this graph. Uh, I have it in the documentation, but it's actually good enough for our purposes. So what happens is it shows you the distribution of the positive and negative classes. Right? In this case, the negative class is um, you know, the non-interesting tweet. And then the positive class is the actionable tweet here, kind of shown in yellow uh, in this hypothetical graph. But what's most interesting is this kind of area here where the two graphs overlap. And on the left-hand side, you see the yellow curve that uh, will be mislabeled uh, as negative. In other words, a non-actionable tweet. And on the right side of this vertical bar, the threshold, we'll see some uh, samples that will be mislabeled uh, as positive. You see, the algorithm doesn't give us uh, true false. It gives us a score between 0 and 1. And we can choose this threshold. And based on the threshold, based on this cutoff value, we can decide uh, how many errors of either kind we're willing to tolerate, and how many errors uh, is uh, appropriate for our use case to tolerate. And in this case, as I'm moving this bar around, you will see at the bottom the data is changing over here. This shows the false negatives and false positives. These are the kind of errors that we will generate by this uh, uh, graph. And what is most important here for our use case of actionable and non-actionable tweets? Perhaps you could decide that the cost of ignoring, potentially ignoring a, uh, an important tweet is much higher than the cost of use or the reviewer spending the time reviewing uninteresting tweets. Right? And so in this case, we should move this bar to minimize the false negative rate. But as you, know, as you see, as I'm moving this towards kind of the smallest false negative rate, I'm also introducing a large false positive rate of errors. And at some point, this may not be uh, a desired effect. So you have to find the right position uh, in your model to kind of balance the two costs and, and decide what's more important for you. And of course, uh, you can see how convenient, how easy it is to kind of uh, configure this model using uh, this visual interface. OK, great. Um, so we've built the model. And in fact, how can we use it? It can be used in two different ways, either in terms of batch predictions. I can upload a new set of tweets and have it work in the asynchronous fashion, figure out all the labels, and produce the labels, return the labels to me. Or I can configure it to work in a real-time fashion, just respond to my uh, requests to label new incoming data. And so for us, to build a more interesting system, what we really would like to do is build something like this for this demo. So we've already seen a Python script collecting or scraping these tweets. We run it on an EC2. We can then set up a Kinesis stream to ingest those tweets. And Kinesis would be appropriate here if 
you needed to scale this to a much larger uh, kind of uh, flow, inflow of tweets. And Carlos just showed you Lambda. We can attach Lambda to the Kinesis stream so that every new item that comes in, the Lambda function can get invoked, can call machine learning service, have the data labeled, and of course, if the data is not interesting, it will discard it. Uh, and if it is interesting, it will publish it on an SNS uh, topic. Of course, one of the simplest ways to um, uh, consume the SNS um, is through an email message. And in this case, uh, we don't even need to leave the AWS ecosystem because we've just uh, well, recently launched a, a work mail, a corporate uh, mail service. And I am going to do this. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, for this demo. OK. Now, again, setting these things up uh, takes a little bit of time. There is a Python script here as well that does set everything up for you. So that's, that's convenient, and I've done that already. Um, for the most part, it's figuring out the um, you know, Lambda uh, permissions, for example, um, the IAM permissions, uh, and little things like this. Now, I have my Amazon WorkMail mailbox set up as well. Um, right now, I don't have any email messages, or maybe I do. Let's see. Oh, these are coming from the old test that I had. Let's delete them so we can see them uh, starting from fresh. And now there's another um, script that I can run to basically take the data that I've just collected, those tweets, and push them to Kinesis. We need to have the collected tweets, the name of uh, the Twitter stream, and some parameter of how many milliseconds between the pushes. So now we've pushed everything to Kinesis. The Lambda function got invoked a few times. And you know, in, in a few moments, we should expect some messages coming in if they have been labeled as actionable, if they have been labeled as interesting. And these are recent tweets that I've collected. So it's uh, unclear whether some of them are going to be actionable or not. And sometimes it takes a little bit to wait for them to appear. This is not something I can control. <laughs> but it, they may, uh, yeah, so uh, let's look at some of the deleted tweets uh, that came in before, just to understand what this looks like. And maybe the others will come in, if uh, any. So we have uh, set up the SNS to uh, push a JSON formatted uh, I don't know why it's not looking, but uh, here's the email, and I have a link to the Twitter that was intercepted. So here's an example from the previous one. I applied for EFS preview in mid-April, but still haven't heard back. I would like to trial as part of a POC and ETA. OK. So I think this is a, a reasonable, actionable tweet that we would like uh, uh, to receive and understand. And so that's, that's what it is. No. <laughs> it might take a while. Um, all right. Well, I think that's pretty much it. How much time do I have? Out, out of time? <laughs> OK. Well, uh, the links to this demo are available uh, here. Uh, if you could just remember uh, this link, you will find uh, uh, the slides. Uh, and of course, you can connect with me on the Twitter.